Hi, my kids. Uh, I want to talk today about lesson 1-5, which is on measuring segments. And I want you to know that I want you to be able to say, I can find the lengths of the segments. I can find the lengths of segments when you're done watching this video. So if you can say, I know how to find the lengths of segments, then you're good. If you can't say that, if you really can't say that with confidence, then yeah, I would recommend you go back and rewatch the video. Okay, first of all, you should have a postulate written down called the ruler postulate right here, postulate 1, 5. And this postulate says a segment can be measured using a ruler, using the rule that the distance between any two points is the absolute value of the difference of the corresponding numbers. So they're saying I can measure this segment CD. And I'm going to, here's my segment CD from here to here. I can measure this segment CD using this ruler even though it's not set up at zero because I'm going to take the absolute value of the difference of the numbers. Okay, the corresponding numbers C is 4 and D is equal to 7. So I'm going to take the absolute value of either 4 difference means subtract 7 or I can take the absolute value of 7 take away 4. I want you to know the order does not matter because watch what happens. Absolute value of negative 3 or the absolute value of positive 3. Now don't forget these bars, these absolute value means whatever is inside the bars, this number automatically turns positive. So this equals 3. Whatever is inside the bars, no matter what it is, automatically turns positive. So this equals 3. So matter, no matter what, the length of CD equals 3. So I would write CD equals 3. Now I want you to notice something. This is segment CD with the bar over it. This means the measure of segment CD equals 3. So when you have no bar, it means the measure of the segment. No bar means the measure of the segment equals 3. Okay, I'm going to scroll this up. We're going to talk about another vocabulary word that you should have. And the vocabulary word that you should have is called congruent segments. Now, the word congruent means equals. So, it means equal or the symbol for congruent is this symbol. It's an equal sign with a squiggly mark over the top of it. Equal sign with a squiggly mark. This is the symbol for congruent. So when you show you have two segments of the same length, for example, if I had A and B, and I had C and D, if I told you this segment was six inches and I told you this segment was six inches. Because they have the same length I can say that segment AB is congruent to segment CD and I would write segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Another thing you could do is you could say because six is equal to six the measure of AB is equal to the measure of CD. So when you're using symbols, the bars, you must use the congruent symbol. When you're talking about measures with no symbols, you use the equal symbol. All right, one other thing. I want to talk about these things called tick marks. Tick marks are very, very important. Tick marks means equal pieces. 
What do I mean by tick marks? I can put any mark I want. I put two tick marks in segment AB and I put two tick marks in segment CD. Because I have these things called tick marks here and here, that automatically means that these two segments are equal. And so if I had on here this little segment right here, x, y, this is supposed to be a y, and this little segment right here, q and r, and I just put tick marks in them, that automatically means that x, y is, is congruent to q, r. So I'd say x, y is congruent to q, r. And those are what congruent segments are. You will see these symbols all the time in geometry class. All right, let me give you some examples of what you're going to see in your homework. Um, you're going to be given a number line with lots of segment points on it. And the directions will say, tell whether the segments are congruent. Now, don't forget this word congruent, vocabulary word, means equal. To start, use the definition of distance. Use the coordinates of the points to write an equation for each distance. So, they say to start, I'm going to find the length of CE. So, it's the absolute value of where is C? This point is at negative 9. Take away, where is E? This point is at negative 1. Well, this is equal to, don't forget, two negatives make a positive, so I'm going to make these positives. The absolute value of negative 8, which is 8. Now I'm going to find FD. Absolute value. First point in F is at 3. D is equal to negative 1. So, I have to, I'm sorry, D is at, I'm sorry, negative 6. <clears throat> Two negatives make a positive, and absolute value of 9 equals 9. Now, let's make sure. C to E. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. F to D. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Sure enough, they are not equal. So I would write C E does not equal F D. They are not congruent. Okay. Um, now let's check C D and F G. C D is equal to C is at negative 9. Take away D, which is at negative 6. Two negatives make a positive. Absolute value of negative 3 equals 3. FG, F is at the point 3. Subtract G, which is at the point 6. Absolute value of negative 3 equals 3. These are equal. So I know that CD does equal FG, or CD is congruent to FG. means the same thing. I want to make sure you have the examples copied above, so if you need to pause, go ahead and pause and write these examples down. Okay, we're going to get to one of the most important postulates you're going to use all throughout geometry, and this is called the segment addition postulate. This postulate is so very important. You will use this postulate oftentimes in geometry class. You need to remember this and put it into your little brain. So the postulate says, if three points A, B, and C are collinear, then, and B is between A and C, then AB plus BC is equal to AC. So I have three points, and I have a segment AB, so this segment right here, AB, plus this segment right here, B to C, is equal to the whole entire segment. And I like to make like what I call the ice cream cone. This whole segment, AC. So when you put together AB plus, you add it to BC, 
it's going to equal the length of A to C. All right, so we're going to use this segment addition postulate to help us solve problems. We're going to do one with regular numbers and then one with algebra. All right, let's take a look. Now, here's the important. It's very important you draw pictures and mark them appropriately. So the very first thing I know in this example is that GH equals 31. So I put 31 in my picture right in the middle of the segment. The second thing I know is that HI equals 11. So I'm going to put 11 right in the middle of my segment. They want to know how big is it from G to I. I'm going to use segment addition postulate. I know that GH plus HI is equal to GI. So GH is 31 plus HI, which is 11, will equal the length of GI. When I add 31 plus 11, I get 42 equals GI. So GI equals 42, and I'm done. Now let's do the same thing, but with algebra. They tell you the entire length of AB is 25. So from here to here is 25. This is how I mark it in my picture. I'm going to use segment addition postulate again. I know that AN plus NB is equal to AB. So I'm going to substitute what I know. I know that AN is 2x minus 6 plus NB is x plus 7. It equals AB, which I also know is 25. And now I have an algebra equation I can solve. I'm going to first combine my like terms and simplify. 2x and 1x is 3x. Negative 6 plus 7 is 1. I'm going to solve this equation. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. I'm going to bring my answer up here. Cross this out. 3x equals 24. Divide by 3. x equals 8. This is great. I found the value of x. However, I now need to find the value of a, n, and n, b. So I have to do this thing called plug it in, plug it in. So I'm going to put it in. a, n equals 2 times 8 minus 6. Where did I get the 8 from? From this x right there. So it's 16 minus 6, which is equal to 10. Now I have to find the value of NB. NB is equal to 8 plus 7. So NB is equal to 15. So the directions read carefully. It says, find the value of X. Did I do that? Yes. Then find AN and NB. AN is equal to 10. NB is equal to 15. Check. What is 10 plus 15? 25. You know that you are right. Okay. Okay. We're going to do one more type of a problem. Another key vocabulary word is called midpoint. Uh, seems self-explanatory. A midpoint is a point that divides a segment into two congruent or equal segments. In other words, it bisects the segment. Bisects means cut in half. Now here's where the tick marks are very important. As soon as you see that E is the midpoint of segment SG, I can immediately write tick marks to show that SE is equal to e.g., or I can say SE is congruent to e.g. using symbols. Okay, so I want to show you one example using the midpoint, and I'm done with these notes. Okay, the one example, now take a look at this picture very carefully. Even though it doesn't say we have a midpoint, as soon as you see this tick mark and this tick mark, it automatically means that KL is equal to LM. 
automatically because of the tick marks. So in this example, it says that KL is 3x plus 2 and LM is 5x minus 10. I'm going to put those into the equation. KL is 3x plus 2. It's equal to LM, which is 5x minus 10. I now must solve this equation. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. 2 equals 2x minus 10. Add 10 to both sides. 12 equals 2x. Divided by 2. I know x equals 6. This is great, except it doesn't want to know x is. The directions say find km, which means I have to plug it in, plug it in. First I'm going to go to KL. KL is 3 times 6 plus 2. 18 plus 2 equals 20. KL is 20. Let's check. LM is 5 times 6 minus 10. LM is 30 minus 10. LM is also equal to 20. This is great because 20 and 20, they are supposed to be equal. So when I put 20 right here and I put 20 right here, they want to know what's the length of KM. Well, KM is the entire segment. So I have to use segment addition postulate. I know that 20 plus 20 is equal to 40. So KM equals 40. And I answered the question. All right, you guys, that's it for this recording. I want you to have a very great day. I hope you took great notes, and tomorrow in class we'll work on this. Make sure you write all these examples down so we can check them in class tomorrow. Have a good night. Bye.